back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys! So I'm here today to review two books that are the second and third in a series. I've already reviewed book one so I'll put a link to that down below if you want to go and watch that but this will be non-spoiler and each of these books could be read as a standalone so you do not have to start with the first one by any means. The first one in the series is called The Curse of Chalion, the second one is called The Paladin of Souls and the third one is called The Hallowed Hunt. I really really loved the first book in the series so certainly go and check out my review for that one but I'm going to be reviewing the other two right now. So the first one I'm going to review is Paladin of Souls. This is the second book in the series. It follows one of the characters that we briefly meet in book one but we don't really see that much of her. She is called Itza and she is the Dowager Royina. Her young child is now ruling over Chalion and she is kind of abandoned in the sticks out to the side of the kingdom. Her mother recently passed away and she's taken on this role as Dowager but for a lot of her life, her adult life, she has been believed to be insane and it's only in the last few years that she has managed to clear that assumption from her name and prove that she is sane and she is able to govern and she is able to do everything the others are able to do around her. For all of her life she's been pretty trapped, she's been pretty pushed around by other people, directed by other people. She's about 40 I think when this book begins and she's just kind of had enough really. She wants to do her own thing for once and she ends up meeting a holy man who gives her the opportunity to go on a quest and a pilgrimage which is basically just her trying to escape in disguise and she does exactly that. She gathers a few loyal friends around her, this holy man, this young messenger who she takes on as a serving girl and a couple of other people and she ends up mounting a pilgrimage to go and worship the gods of this world but along the way she meets all sorts of different tragedies and horrors and very crazy magic. The magic of this world revolves largely around necromancy and sacrifice and spirits and animals. It's certainly a very weird magic system that I don't really think is very easy to explain but it's something that you find a lot more out about as you go through the book and it's a storyline was super interesting for me. I will say that Lewis McMaster Bejeweled is quite a slow world building writer. She definitely likes to build up the world around you and build up the characters in front of you before she settles into a plot line. So a lot of her books, well I've only read three so far, but of the three I've read so far they've all been quite slow builders and kind of the halfway point I think is where it all starts to turn and get a bit more crazy and a bit more exciting. But this story I felt like was just super interesting from page one and even though Itza is quite a bitter character, she's quite a sad and sullen one at some points because of what has happened to her over her life. She has a lot of regrets and a lot of worries in her time that have made her kind of put her own happiness to the side in favour of helping her children and being there for people who loved her and hopefully trying to prove her innocence about madness. She's kind of put everyone else before herself and so this book is the first time where she really gets to be herself, to explore her passions, her loves, exciting things that surround her and really go on an adventure rather than just be trapped into the life of nobility. What I loved about her was her resilience, her tenacity, the way that she was able to say no to people, she was able to be in command of all those around her, even when they doubted her she was able to do that and there were some po moments in this book where she was separated from those who were supposed to be guarding and helping her and she was able to really stand on her own two feet and prove that she is the Dowager Royina by blood, not just by name. So I really, really loved that about her as a character and I think that is what made this book really work for me, even despite its slower pacing and the way that the magic is slowly revealed to you. It was just really, really great the whole way through and I really enjoyed it. So I believe I ended up giving this one about a 4.5 stars. It was definitely super great, super on par with Curse of Chalion and I was really excited to head into book three, The Hallowed Hunt. However, <laughs> sadly, disappointingly, The Hallowed Hunt really was not my kind of book. Um, I think it's largely because we focus on a different character again. 
and this character is one who I didn't really like. He is a young noble who is sworn to the crown and he goes on this journey to go and collect a murderess who has murdered one of the people in power that he is supposed to serve and this young woman that he finds is very beautiful but she has in fact murdered the person he serves so he is going to take her to a place far away to be put on trial for the murder that she has committed and hopefully I guess put away or executed something like that. So the thing I liked about this book was that we got more interesting magic in this world. There are things like demons that kind of inhabit people's bodies and we get bonds between animals and people which I really enjoyed kind of learning about over the course of the book and I do think there were some great moments with the magic in this world and in this story but for me it never quite gelled in the same way that Curse of Chalion and Paladin of Souls did for me. I just found that I was suffering from not really caring about the characters so much. I didn't feel like I was as into the world and although it is the same world because each book kind of takes a different direction with focusing on different magic systems and following different characters I just felt like this didn't really feel like a Bujol book for me. It felt very subpar, it felt very slow and meandering and boring to the point where I just didn't really enjoy it that much. It was okay and there were moments that were really good and could have been great but it just seemed to suffer from a real lack of direction. Whilst the other two books in the series are quite slow moving and do take a long time to build, I feel like this book in particular just never really went anywhere. There were things that happened and of course the story does have a, res a resolution but for me it just felt a bit contrived in the end and there is a very epic ending to this book but the point that I got to that ending I just I was already bored of it I was just not feeling the story by the time I got there and so even though it was a good ending it just felt a bit subpar and a bit too little too late I guess um, I just wasn't impressed by this read and that was a real disappointment. I kind of knew from a few other people that the third one in the series was supposedly the worst and so I kind of hoped that I would like it more than they had insinuated I would and this one is actually set up as a prequel to the series rather than the third one chronologically so maybe the world was just rubbish before the other two stories I don't know but for me it was it just didn't feel great and I just I was let down by this one so I wouldn't really recommend the third one if I'm honest. I think you could easily read the first two and be quite happy with the story and enjoy it as it is because they are standalone books and they do link by the world but nothing really else links. A few characters here and there but not much to be honest. So for me I really really liked book one and two. The third one I ended up only giving a two out of five stars. It was okay. I wouldn't say it's an essential reading thing at all. I would say it's there for you to read if you want to, but for me it just it wasn't great. So I believe she has some other novellas in this world which are the Penric ones. I've heard very good things about those so I'll certainly be trying out those books in the future when I can get my hands on them and I know that she has some other science fiction books and a whole series of them. I think there's like 16 or something which I certainly do want to get my hands on and try because I keep hearing great things. I am definitely intrigued about your thoughts on Bujol generally. Have you read any of her books? What do you think of them? How does her fantasy compare to her sci-fi? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book. Then come back and chat with me again